Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Outlook Industries Podcast. I'm your host, Trevor Johnson. Back at you with another episode. Today, we have a very special guest, Skater Guy 5000 the, uh, the man, the myth, the legend. He is such an inspiring human being. He's got such a cool outlook on everything. And, and he's just like, he's a character. He's an awesome character. He's like, he thinks of himself as a character, which is super cool. Yeah, thank you guys. I hope you're enjoying the podcast so far. Um, I'm trying to put out these two episodes a week. If you could go and like everything and follow me on uh, social media, that'd be awesome. Outlook underscore industries on Instagram. And... Outlook Industries on wherever you find your podcasts. Obviously, if you're if you're listening on Apple Music, hit the five stars down below. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys. Um, and yeah, let's let's get into this this episode with Mr. Matt. It's the Outlook Podcast. We're here with the Outlook Podcast. Yeah. Just we're here. We're talking to cool people. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Outlook Industries podcast. I'm your host, Trevor Johnson, and we are here today with the man, the myth, the legend, Skater Guy 5000. How are you doing, Matt? Doing well. How are you? Doing good. Um, I, I'm like really thankful that uh, you took some time out of your schedule to come talk to me today. That's really awesome. So thank you for that. My pleasure. <laughs> um, did you uh, grow up in Laramie? I did. I'm a Laramie native. Grew up here, nice. here my whole life. Yep. Awesome. How did you uh, get into skateboarding? Kind of tell me the story about how that went down. So I remember my first skateboard was this old school 80s style Veriflex, basically a Walmart board for back then. Yeah. Uh, so it was just a white, white and black board with like bright pink wheels. Yeah. Um, nice. I remember trying to ride it and I never really got anywhere with it. And rode bikes, played street hockey and did all sorts of other things. So, yeah. um, didn't really get like completely into it. Then I always liked the, you know, style of skateboarding and things I saw on TV about it and stuff like that. And yeah. Uh, skateboarding was cool. Just, I wasn't very good at it. So, and I uh, had all these other things going on, especially yeah. street hockey. I was huge in street hockey back then. So, um, and then junior high, I kind of got like immersed into this culture of skateboarding a little bit more. Uh, I was kind of attracted to, you know, the baggy pants look and yeah. all that. And, you know, so I, my, I, start, I tried skateboarding again, picked up that old Veriflex and kind of got back into it and started to figure out some stuff and persevered through the learning process. And then yeah. eventually got a real skateboard. And my first board was a Think. Nice. Uh, nice swirly board, swirly pink and gray and white uh, with the pink um, or with the think, uh, light bulb in it. I still remember the board itself Got it nice. from Colorado, I think on a soccer trip. Nice. And so just started working on trying to learn tricks. I was, it was not, I was not very fast learning compared to like a lot of people. Some people can like yeah. learn how to kick flip in a day or a week. And that was, Oh yeah, no, not me. <laughs> it took me so long to learn how to Ollie on a skateboard. And, uh, cause that's kind of where I started to, uh, I started on skateboarding and BMX and then, uh, found scootering and kind of went with that. But, um, did you have anybody that helped you get into it? Any friends or thing, people that you, uh, that got you into it? Um, you know, it was kind of almost like, uh, you know, I, you know, saw the people I've like went in junior high, which all the elementary schools here kind of got combined into at that point. Yeah. And, you know, I kind of, you know, I thought the skaters were all cool and stuff. And so cool. I kind of wanted to look into that culture a little bit more and, you know, I got really into the skateboard itself, really just like trying yeah. to figure it out and kind of like the combination just kind of set me off from there. Um, eventually learned how to kick flip, heel flip, pop shove. It were kind of my first things and even invented like a no comply trick back then too. Which oh really? Was okay. My, my first specialty trick. I can barely do it now. It's really, really hard. I can't <laughs> believe I was, I was at it back then, but so it was kind of on from there and yeah, I never really like, I never knew, really knew what skateboarding had in store for me or how much I progressed in it. Yeah. I was just doing it and it was fun and yeah. loved the culture and it was fun to interact with people and skateboarding and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, when did you kind of deviate into like your no comply tricks? Because that's kind of like your specialty. And, uh, I think it's kind of interesting how you like kind of took that and ran with it. And I, I just like was wondering how you came like into that and what inspired you. I would say it was the mid 2000s. I, I like, 
uh, skateboarding a lot. And yeah. I was trying to think of new things to do and new things to try and stuff like that. And I remember that no comply finger flip I had back in my early days. I'm like, you know, I'm going to try more tricks like that. Yeah. So I was trying that and I was like trying other variations, just kind of shot from there. Yeah. Um, and started inventing my own tricks, I guess, basically. And now I can do some really crazy ones. Yeah, I know. You're, you're like tornado flips and all those, <laughs> those cool things. I see them on your Instagram. If, uh, yeah, I never, I never thought I'd ever do like 540 flips. And I've even got 720 flips, which are basically my Jeez. hardest tricks. Yeah, I that's, really do it that much, but still. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of kind of tell me about like your outfits and how you kind of got into the like inspired in that way and like how you choose your outfits and i know you like to be bright and you kind of i heard when i talked to you and laramie that you kind of almost think of yourself as a character which i think is awesome so uh how, how did you come across that and how did that kind of happen uh, you know i always liked crazy clothes i guess yeah. like i don't know stylish clothes but you know i guess early in my years like in elementary school my parents kind of bought my clothes for me and they wouldn't really let me they didn't really choose let me choose my clothes back then oh gotcha odd. i mean i had some clothes that were definitely chosen but for the most part it wasn't then yeah. you know got into skateboarding you know actually i got hockey jerseys before that too because i was yep. i became like an avid hockey fan before i even got into skateboarding because elementary school i saw i think it was like third grade or something like that fourth grade i saw yeah. the olympics and that got me into hockey i was gotcha. watching the because there were some hockey players in my grade and they were like adamant about having it on TV. Oh yeah. So, school. So I got to see some of the hockey and I was like, yeah, got super into it after that and started getting into the NHL stuff like that. Learning yeah. about it, like learned about Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. And then I got yeah. hockey video games after that. And it kind of was on from there, I guess you could say for hockey. Um, got a few hockey jerseys then. Yeah or junior high and high school and stuff like that. I got a few more. And then, you know, I just kind of totally fell for it. And yeah, um, I just, I wanted to have all the jerseys yeah. <laughs> so collecting them and getting them. And then I figured out eBay was a good way to get a bunch of, Oh, I'm sure. Actually. Yeah. I really wanted a Hartford Whalers Jersey was like, the yeah. thing I really want so bad. So I was like, you know, I bet I could find one on eBay. So yeah. I did go on eBay and I found one. And then like, it was just kind of on from there. I was able to, yeah, find jerseys for pretty cheap on ebay overall you can find really good deals so yeah sweet because um, I, I do kind of see that start. i kind of see that hockey influence in your your clothing as well which i think is really cool even to this day because like the baggy hockey jerseys and stuff is super cool i did it okay it's it's yeah. a fun way to dress i think of myself as like a living cartoon yeah so i kind of actually like dress the part and live the part i guess you could say that's kind of my my mo yeah, I, I love that view view on life. I think that's that's really cool and really inspirational. And um, I'd like to kind of take more of that and uh, learn by that as well. Um, so, like, where are your favorite places to skate? I would say my favorite place in the world is probably the Union Bus Stop. Yep. It's just like it wasn't like that before. Like they remodeled the parking lot and built that bus stop, and it's just like smooth ground, perfect for flip tricks and kind of right in the center of everything with people walking around so i get to interact with people and yeah. get a filthy nonchalant lead trying yeah. to, hoping i don't notice like filming film, filming tricks and it's always yeah. happy when i land in form and stuff like that and you know my skateboarding's really grown just from like just hammering out tricks at that spot yeah just so much fun there and like the ground's all smooth and I'm friends with all the bus drivers and stuff like that so they're fun to interact with and well i'm sure a, yeah happy place for sure um i would say my second pl favorite place in the world is probably venice beach <laughs> oh venice beach is sick yeah I've, I've been there once um where's the best flat ground the best flat ground at venice beach at venice beach yeah uh just that outside plaza park oh right yeah area, right at right at like before you hit the main skate park oh right okay That's yeah like, that's a prime place for doing tons of flip tricks and doing lines and yeah. getting on a roll and landing like seven, eight, nine tricks in a row and stuff like that. So yeah, you can just keep going. Um, why? Cause like you've been riding on the university campus for a long time now, haven't you? So like, Oh yeah. It's where I grew up skating. Yeah. Okay. So you just kind of naturally go there. Is there, is there a reason you chose to skate on the campus? Cause also like, I don't see you at the skate park very often, which I think is kind of cool that you kind of find your own way. Um, 
why why do you choose the campus and what is like why don't you ride like at the skate park more? I just like to, I just want to hear like how you think about that. Well, back in the day, back in the, when I first started skateboarding, we didn't even have a skate park in Laramie. Yeah. Okay. Mercy and downtown were basically the main skate spots to go to. Gotcha. There are a few side ones here and there, but those are the main hubs, especially university just because yeah, it's a good place to be in skating. Um, that's always just been my home base and it's a nice place to do flip tricks at and ride around and interact with people and, it's just, it feels like home. Yeah. Sure. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> did you, did you attend UW? Oh yeah. I got uh, two degrees, one in business admin, one in marketing. Nice. And, and uh, marketing uh, for a living. So. Oh, cool. Where, where do you work? I work for a local uh, billing collection company called uh, American Collection Systems. Oh, nice. Do you like that? Yeah, it's a good job. I love it. I love the people awesome. there. And I love what I do. So yeah, I love my job for sure. What, what exactly do you do like day to day? Uh, you know, for the most part, my main job is uh, calling businesses that most likely use our services and, you know, checking on their situation, making sure they're happy, basically trying to, you know, get them as clients, um, steal away from other like businesses and competitors and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the main thing I do. I do other things like um, design marketing material and, help with marketing strategy and stuff like that and um, help, help our sales guy uh, get as many leads and clients as he can. So. Gotcha. Nice. Um, tell me about the uh, skater guy, 5,000 uh, statue petition. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely one of my uh, favorite honors, I guess you could say just being yeah. considered in that light, you know, having yeah. someone's yeah. petition and like having all those people, virtually sign it and like having a good comment and stuff like that. And man, that was just, that was something else. That's, you know, that's one of the things that makes me feel like my life is complete is yeah. in that light, like, wow, being considered for a sculpture and stuff like that, even if it never happens, just makes me so happy to think about, you know, yeah, it's, I'm ecstatic about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of funny because, uh, I first, like right when I kind of moved into the dorms in Laramie, um, I saw you riding outside of white hall there. And, uh, I, I, I like, I don't think I talked to you, but I was like, dude, th this guy's cool. Like I like like his outfits and stuff. So I went to like, I think it was lunch or dinner or something like that. And I was talking to my friends about you and they're like, Oh yeah, that's skater guy 5,000. Like, do you not follow him on Instagram? And I was like, yo, what? So I followed you on Instagram and saw all your stuff there. And I think the first post I saw was about that petition. And I was like, that is so sick. That'd be so cool. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's um, amazing for sure. Yeah. How do you, uh, how would you av advise people to be more creative with their trick selection? And how did you kind of find that creative aspect and how do you look at it? Oh, man, that's, that's a good question. Uh, you just got to kind of find your way and just kind of think outside the box, I guess you could say with your tricks. Yeah. Like, for me, like I even have tricks that like are inspired by like uh, the major pro sports in America. I guess you yeah. could say like I have a hockey trick I call the cross check. Yeah, uh, which is pretty, which is super fun trick. I can do it basically off anything, off any object. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. I also have a baseball trick called the major league finger flip. Uh huh. I think I've seen that one before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely the globe trotter, which is my basketball inspired trick. Yeah, and my. I have a play action finger flip, which I don't haven't really filmed yet, but that's always a lot of fun too. <laughs> so just like thinking outside the box and thinking about different things you can do and yeah. um, variations, like a lot of my tricks are like, have like a base trick I've done with them, but just to add like a different wrinkle, like a body varial or an under flip or a yeah. different finger flip or finger flip with an under flip, like some of my new tricks. Yeah. Uh, just trying to get sick with it and think of different things you can do and, Think about like outside like influences and how they can you can maybe may, make a trick out of them. I guess. Yeah, how you can take like different things that aren't even related to whatever sport you're doing at all and just try to like take inspiration from that. That's really unique. Exactly. And like <laughs> I've taken a lot of inspiration, definitely, especially in Laramie, from like what you were doing, trying to figure out like some finger flips and stuff. 
that I could do with my scooter, which um, I did come up with a couple tricks and that, that was pretty cool nice. and a cool experience. So um, well, I'm honored about that because you're a sick scooter. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Um, what, uh, who are your sponsors and how did you kind of come across them? Um, you know, I was kind of sponsored there actually recently by a board yeah. company called Casket Wood, but, um, you know, the pandemic kind of hit and they kind of just put that in a little bit of a pause. Oh, um, gotcha. That's the only sponsor I've ever really had before though. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I've never been sponsored before and that was my first and it was a thrill to get like free boards and, you know, it's almost like kind of like I lived the dream and that kind yep. of came my life in a way too, I feel so. That was a pretty happy experience. And um, th- one of my, f- like a trick that was posted, like one of my five, or it was a triple tornado flip, one of my yeah. artists and probably my best one I've ever landed actually. Um, got posted on Snapchat or something like that. And it got yeah. like a lot of attention, even by like, like a bunch of pro skaters and stuff like that. And, really? Uh, I guess even I heard Tony Hawk even got show, shown my trick and he was stoked on it. So Really? that was pretty amazing too That's yeah so cool that was hear about yeah it was, it was a thrill to be sponsored like that and you know have some cool stuff happen yeah um but it's also cool to you know i never it, it doesn't matter like everything else basically is all bonus because i'm just having so much fun just yep. doing the tricks yeah. and doing the damn thing you know it's just creating the variations and working hard to get better at them and yeah um it's just all super addicting and it gets more, more addicting, the better I get at it. And the more uh-huh. tricks I like figure out and get under my belt and stuff like that. So yeah. Every, like I said, everything else is just kind of bonus. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I feel too. It's like, if you don't enjoy it for just riding, like if you, there's so many people who get tied up in like getting sponsored and like having that, like they have to have somebody supporting them and they have to like travel and do all these, like get places and comps and stuff. And I think that if you don't just, if you're not just happy with like just going out and riding every day and just enjoying it for what it is, like you probably won't last. And that's like, I just love the sports for what they are. So um, I think that's really important. And uh, I like how yeah. you, you look at it that way. Um, it's a good al- point for sure. <laughs> also, um, Where's your, you travel a lot. I've, I've seen on your Instagram and stuff. Like where's your favorite place to travel? Uh, definitely LA. Yep. That's my, that's my main, that's my vacation spot for sure. Nice. Where um, do you go in LA? Uh, so usually I follow the kind of like the same trip path, but it's always like, it's always a different trip altogether really. Yeah. So I usually spend the first part of it. I stay at Venice beach or nearby. Yep. I spend my first part of it there. Um, then I always uh, stay at night at Hollywood. Hollywood Boulevard, just off of Boulevard right there. Yeah. So, which is always a blast. Spend That's such a cool area. Hollywood. Yeah, it's way cool. It's, it's kind of crazy sometimes, but oh, it's for a sure. good time. It's a good time skateboarding and all the stars and stuff like that. And yeah. It's kind of a mag- magical place for sure. Uh-huh. And then, uh, then I always go to Universal Studios for a day and then yep. Disneyland for usually at least two days. Nice. Oh. And I've learned to spend a day in LA before I go back for sure. This last time I spent a couple or no, I did only spent one after, I guess, and drove back this is the last time. So gotcha. Nice. Um, what do you use to edit your videos? Um, I use a combination of software called Movavi. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard and of it. And also uh Filmora as well, a little bit too. Is that uh, on so your phone or do you do it on a computer? It's on the computer for sure. Oh, okay, nice. I'm horrible with the phone. <laughs> yeah, okay, gotcha. So what do you do you record with your phone and then upload it to your computer? Typically? Uh usually How do you do it? I have this uh handheld camera here. Oh nice, okay. I, I attach it to a tripod and then like set up the tripod wherever. Yeah. And film the trick and then transfer from the memory card onto the computer and that's how that goes. Yeah. Do do you have any videos that inspire you when you make those little edits or is it just like you just start going and see where it ends up? I just start going and <laughs> see where it ends up. Like I get like ideas in my head, like different projects and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, you know, I have a lot of stuff that I need to like work on and complete finally. <laughs> yeah. But I always do like a Halloween video and a Christmas video. Yep. Some other holiday videos once in a while too. Those are my big ones. I, I feel uh-huh. like you know, Halloween and my Christmas ones. I, I always put in a lot of work on those every year. Yeah, I always uh, like the uh, uh, Halloween ones. Yeah. 
Was that your ringtone? Yeah, that was my. Is that the Mar- is that, that the my, uh, text message tone? The the level up for Mario. It is yes. Or the one is it level up or one up? <laughs> uh, it's one up when you get a mushroom. Oh, okay, gotcha. You uh, you play a bunch of Mario games then? Uh, you know I have I I um play hockey most of the time actually. Is okay. The main thing that you could say. Yeah. But, ho- but Mario is definitely kind of my second go to, I guess. Nice. Awesome. Mainly Mario Kart is my thing, but Mario I Kart. Really still, I love Mario Kart. <laughs> I've been. I'm starting to like think about getting back into it, but I kind of steered away from video games a little bit just because. Yep. You know, there's. I started watching a lot more stuff and got into shows and gotcha. movies and like that. What's your favorite um, show right now? Right now, I just started uh, getting back into Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Nice. Yeah. Here's that. Um, I have not. No. Is it good? Oh man. What's it about? <laughs> it's about um, the characters are a meat wad, like a big wad of meat, and his name yeah. is Meat Wad. Master Shake, which is this big shake. Nice. And uh, Frylock, which is this uh, box of fries. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I've... They basically live in this house and do great... All sorts of crazy stuff happens. I don't know if I've seen a full episode, but I've seen part of it. It seems pretty cool. Nice, yeah. It's, I see there's new episodes I haven't even seen or new seasons I didn't know were out before. So, yeah. I started from the beginning, though, so I'm going to watch all the way through them. Yeah, That's I know you show. have... Yeah. yeah, I know you have a bunch of uh, interesting stories being a uh, Skater Guy 5000. Um, and what are your favorites and what have you kind of thought of? Because we kind of talked about this before and you said you'd think of a couple. So I just want to hear. Let's see. What's a good one? This isn't really skater guy related, but I got like, no, that's fine. I was basically in a room with the DeLorean by myself, like in my last LA trip. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like went to the Peterson Autom- Automotive Museum. Um, okay. actually the DeLorean was at universal studios for a very long time. So I got pictures with it there. Yeah. It was behind a glass yeah. case uh-huh. and stuff like that. We had to like stand back. It was kind of roped off. Um, but at the autumn, uh, Peterson automotive museum, it's right there in the open, like, bam, like face wow. to face with the DeLorean. And like, I got like the day I went was a weekday and like early yeah. and there was hardly anyone there. Um, wow. so like a couple points i basically was in the room right by myself with the delorean that's crazy you know, just like right there to touch. that's yeah, insane and, and it before i i didn't know you were supposed to not touch the cars i didn't see any signs at first yeah <laughs> so I, like, I like brushed the delorean a couple times with my hand and like touched it yeah just, you, i know you weren't supposed to do now but <laughs> 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 i got i gotta touch movie history that's there you go yeah favorite things that happened and um a skater guy related thing for sure i say i would say this one halloween this one really fun halloween i had like some years ago yeah i uh, went to a really f- fun house party at this house they called the ranch or whatever okay um there's a lot of cool people there it was a really good time and yeah. um they're like dude if we pulled like the furniture back would you do like some tricks in our living room <laughs> oh yeah i definitely would <laughs> did you do tricks in the living room yeah, so I went out to my car and grabbed my skateboard and they pulled the couch back and gave me some space. That's so um, sick. To, to, like, did a bunch of tricks for him. Some got filmed and stuff. I still have a video from that day, too. So that, that's that, was awesome. one of my, that was one of my favorite things that's ever happened was, you know, everyone was cheering and yeah. excited. I was doing tricks and drunk and, yeah. like, oh, man, it was just the most fun thing ever, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome um you're you're a very inspiring individual and you kind of have totally found your own way and it seems like you don't really worry about what other people say about you and i think that's super awesome and uh how how did you kind of go about like finding yourself and um that kind of stuff because i know a lot of people get caught up in pleasing other people and kind of doing that thing so uh what advice do you have for other people that are struggling with that kind of stuff you know you just got to kind of think your own way sometimes and just do your own thing yeah um screw the consequences i guess you could say exactly who cares what other people think i guess i mean if you're doing your thing and you're having fun you know you're going to attract the right people to you so uh, why worry about being like criticized or 
whatever yeah. happens, whatever people say, just let it be background noise, just brush to the side and, you know, just keep moving forward with life and doing what you love to do. And, um, that's, that's basically it right there. <laughs> yeah. Right. That, that's, that's totally true. Um, this is, this is one of my favorite questions, actually. Uh, what would you tell if you were to go back in time and see yourself, what would, what advice would you tell yourself at like, like 10 years ago? Uh, 10 years ago, get on the traveling faster, get out to more places. Um, it's worth the money to save up and go places and see different yeah. things and have different experiences and uh, don't slack. And that's one of my problems I have now is I don't save enough money, which I really need to and get out more yeah. and see, see more places and travel more. That would be the biggest thing actually is just, yeah, get into more places. Don't be shy, just travel and experience things and enjoy life while you can. Cause it goes really fast. Yeah. Just, just do more experience based things. It's kind of what exactly. you think. Yes, definitely. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Um, kind of in the same realm, I guess you could say. I mean, I'm yeah. living a good life and enjoying it. And, um, you know, working on traveling more and stuff like that. And, um, hopefully making more of that happening. And I'm also thinking about possibly starting a clothing company on the side. And That'd be awesome. Where that goes. Maybe get some extra income for that traveling that I want to do yeah. while I'm still alive. And uh, that's kind of it right there. Just keep skating, snowboarding until I die. Yeah, that's that's right. You're you're a big snowboarder, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've started snowboarding when I was young, kind of right after I started skateboarding, and got into that, and you know, kind of lost it in college just a little bit. Just wasn't going as much, and yeah, um, been picking it back up the last few years, especially and. Uh, just loving it out there on a board and yeah, um, finding different paths. And um, this year, I snowed with a bunch of different people, which is a lot of fun and met some new folks. And yeah. It's a good time. And now I just need to, like I said, expand and go to different ski areas and try some other places and have some more experiences. So yeah, it's definitely kicked me off to, you know, experience more snowboarding joy. Yeah. That's, that's kind of where I'm at too. I need to go skiing more. I wanted to ski a bunch more this, uh, this year because well, the snow was great at the end of the year. I didn't get out much, but uh it was really good the last yeah couple months. Yeah, I know. Uh I got tied up with school and stuff, but um I just got new skis this year. So I was like, I went a bunch in the beginning, like when the snow was bad and the snow got good, and all of a sudden I'm just like not going anymore. So that was kind of upsetting. Really I bet, man. We had some really good weekends up there with lots of snow and yeah, it, like the, one of the first times I went, it was like a pure blizzard and that was a blast. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, like, that's always the best. And one of the lifts was shut down. So you had to hike over to like the side on the chute. Oh really? Chute chair. And it was just like, it, it was just blizzarding, blowing super hard. And it was a super sweet experience that day. And just oh, wild. Man, just loving, loving it. Snowboarding. <laughs> have you, have you been up to steamboat lately or this year? I've only been there once in my life and that was a long time ago. So no. Oh man, you got to get up there. Steamboat's awesome. It's so expensive though, but you can get the season pass at snowy that comes with the five days or whatever. That's totally worth it. Nice. I'll Just keep for that the, in mind for, for the future. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I don't know, my best ski days of my entire life have been a steamboat. So um, that's, that's kind of my recommendation. I don't know. Um, Winter park a couple of times. That's a pretty good place. Really? I haven't been there yet. I was going to get an icon this last year if COVID didn't happen, but then COVID happened and really mm. screwed that up for me because I had to move back home. So otherwise I'd still be in Laramie, but. Yeah. Oh, one of my favorite, before we move on, my favorite yeah. snow places as a uh, Whistler. That's probably my really? favorite snow experience I ever had was, yeah, I spent a day snowboarding at Whistler and it was, it was magical up there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I, I need to get up there. Canada's sick. Yeah, it's crazy. I wanted to experience more of it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, what is, uh, what, here's kind of a hard question that I, I like to end with. Um, what is your meaning of life? My meaning of life. Yeah. Oh, man. I wasn't experiencing, wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> Super deep, right? Right? Yeah. I love this question too. Oh, man. Just being like, you know, being your own person and, uh, you know, 
inter- interacting and trying to get along with others and meshing with others as good as you can and um, being a great part of society and uh, yeah. making people around you happy and um, that'll make you happy as well. So. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you, Matt, for uh, coming on the podcast today. Where can uh, we follow you? Uh, Skater Guy 5000 on Instagram and YouTube as well. If you want to go check out some of my videos, which haven't really even been looked at very much before. So that'd be sweet. Is that, that also Skater Guy 5000? Skater Guy 5000 on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for listening to the podcast today. Thank you again, Matt, for taking the time to uh, come on. Pleasure. Definitely. And, thank uh, you, Trevor. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.